In this video, we will recreate the intro for the Doom game using the Python language in the Pygame module, and analyze in detail the so-called Doom Fire algorithm. This fire was first seen on the PlayStation console in a ported version of Doom. At that time, it was such a well-optimized version of the game that the developers managed to implement this fire not only in the intro, but we can also see the use of Doom Fire as a background on the 21st level of the game. And so let's take a step-by-step -step look at how this fire algorithm works. So, here is a simple application class for working with Pygame, with three methods, update, draw and run. Calling the run method on an instance of this class creates a black window of the specified resolution, and information about the number of frames per second is displayed in the window caption to evaluate performance. Let's create a separate Doom Fire class, in the class constructor we will get access to the application instance, and similarly we will need two methods, update and draw, leave them empty for now. Then we will create an instance of the Doom Fire class in the application constructor, and we will need to call its methods of the same name from the update and draw methods. Now let's check that the application starts without errors, and we can say that the initial setup of our project is ready. Let's look at an image of a flame, and as it spreads and cools, four primary colors can be distinguished, white, yellow, orange, and red. And using these colors from black to white, we can form a palette of fire, by interpolating between these colors with a certain number of steps. So let's determine the number of steps between colors and form the list of colors itself to form the palette. We will get the palette itself using a separate method, let it be static. In this method, in a loop, we will get each pair of colors, and according to the number of steps, we can use the linear interpolation function, based on the value of each step, we will get a uniform distribution of shades. And to look at our palette, I propose to write a method in which we display each color of the palette as a square. Then let's call this method in the draw method, and run the program. So now you can observe the palette for our fire, and we see that it is formed as expected. In the next step, we need to form an array for fire, in which the elements of the last row correspond to the brightest color from the palette, so to speak, this row will be the source of all fire. To make it clear how the fire is formed, we will choose a large pixel size and, based on its value, calculate the dimensions for the fire array. So we will form this array in the getFireArray method, it will be a two-dimensional array initially filled with zeros, and then we will assign the last color value from the palette to the elements of the last row. And in order to display the fire array, we will write the draw fire method, here we iterate over the array and get the color indices from the palette, the zero index does not interest us, since it is black. And for drawing fire particles, I suggest importing the GFX draw module, the drawing functionality of this module is much faster than the standard one, and then we will use the box function to draw fire particles. Let's call this method from the draw method and see the result. And as you can see, we have drawn our fire array, and at the bottom of the screen you can see the line for initializing the fire. So to start the culminating part of this project, we need to import a random integer generator. And the first thing we need to do is implement a simple way to spread fire from the bottom up. To do this, we write the do fire method, where we iterate over the fire array again, but excluding the first row in order to spread the fire. If we encounter a particle with an index other than zero, then we assign the particle that is above it the next color index according to the fire palette. So let's call this method from the update method. And now we can observe a still static picture, the fire has spread through the columns to a height equal to the number of colors in the palette. And as you understand, if you increase the number of steps between colors, then the height of the fire will increase accordingly. In order for some fire effect to appear, we can subtract a random value of 0 or 1 instead of the next color from the palette. And finally, we have a more spectacular picture, which really looks like the process of spreading fire, but also it's still not very natural. We can make it so that the fire spreads not only up, but also to the left and right, then here we must take into account that we do not go beyond the fire array and palette indices. 
Thus, we get a real firestorm, which is perfect for some kind of pixel art game, but at the same time, this is a very close implementation of the Doom Fire algorithm. And now let's increase the resolution of our fire, and look at the result of the program. So now we have increased the resolution of the fire, and definitely the whole picture looks better. But as you can see, we have a strong drop in performance to almost 10 frames per second, and at the same time we are seeing barely noticeable propagating particles that we don't really need. Let's eliminate this undesirable effect in the following way. If a zero color index has reached some particle, that is, it has gone out, then we spread only black color and only upwards. So the introduction of this condition allowed us to raise the frame rate to almost 20 frames per second, but again this is very low performance due to the interpreted nature of the Python language in dynamic typing. But still, we have ways to increase the speed of code execution. We can use the NumPy library or make some functions compile with just-in-time compilers. But this time I would like to do a different trick. If we look again at the PlayStation Fire intro, it's not hard to see that the same fire pattern is used four times, and I suggest doing the same. Then we define a variable for the number of fire repetitions, and based on this value we calculate the width of the fire array. We also need to create a surface that will match the size of one part for repetition. Now in the draw fire method, paint this surface black and draw particles on it. Let's write a loop, for now in one iteration, to apply fire surf to the main rendering surface and look at the result. So we see that everything is working properly, and our fire is displayed on one fourth of the screen. And now let's make a loop for the number of repetitions of fire. And in this way we manage to perform the same trick as in the intro on the PlayStation, and at the same time the number of frames is again 60. Here we can say that the main part of the work is done, and this fire effect can be applied at your discretion. For example, I was able to easily use this fire in my Doom style raycasting game. If someone has not watched this video yet, I advise you to watch this tutorial for the Pygame library. So, returning to our project, we just have to implement the logo of the game, let's do the same as it appears in the PlayStation intro. And first of all, I place the image of the game logo in the project folder. In addition, we need to make sure that the surface on which we render the fire is transparent for black. Next, we load the image in the standard way for Pygame, you can also scale the image to the required size. Then we define the coordinates of the final position of the logo. Given the size of the image, I determined the coordinates for the logo in the middle of the screen in width and one third in height. We also define the coordinates of the initial position of the logo along the Y axis. Now we will write the draw logo method, here we will track the initial coordinate of the logo height, and if it is greater than the final coordinate, then we move the logo up along the Y axis with the set speed. And when the coordinates correspond to the final ones, then we leave the logo already in its place. And now let's call this method first in the draw method, and enjoy the final result. Well, we can finally see it now, our recreated intro using the Doom Fire algorithm.